avatars of time, avatar 1. This particular avatar deals with the appearance of time seen as a volume. A volume is something different than a duration or a chronology as such. In order to understand this, we could draw an analogy with a substance. A substance like air, for instance. Air has a certain amount of physical components, particles of air, different types of particles. The moment air starts flowing, we can detect this. We call this a wind or a gust or something, but we can detect this on our skin or with some sort of device to measure this. What we could claim is that what wind is to air, chronology is to time. Because it's not about the particles of air that makes the wind, it is the duration of the air flow itself which creates a volume. In the same way that time flowing through some type of chronology into existence creates a volume of time. We could exemplify this by looking at some images of the formation of clouds. These clouds are made of water, as we know, and it is the airstream that brings this water into a certain local condition. This local condition then makes the formation of these clouds a reality. What the actual shape of this cloud will be after its formation is for us impossible to predict. The local conditions know so many variations that it would be impossible to predict the exact shape and duration of this formation of the cloud. But what we do know is that the airflow causing these water particles to arrive at this local condition is measurable, it's comparable, it's detectable, it is knowable. So, in the end, we cannot speak about these clouds as givens, which cannot be changed, but we can speak of clouds as very, very identifiable concepts, and also concepts with a certain amount of agency, because we all know that clouds can actually have a big influence on the weather conditions itself. So, to conclude the analogy with time, we could say that the airflow is similar to the chronology of time, the time passing, and the formation of clouds could be seen as the formation of a volume of time. To exemplify this concept, we can look at the following moving image. It is a cold man sitting at 5.24, very early in the morning. What we see is a scene, a scene with no connection to a previous scene, uh, nor a connection to a next scene. This is, in that sense, escaping the normal traditional narrative based on chronology of time as an indicator of events to unfold. We can see some elements of movement, we can see cars passing, we can see some movement in the man's gesture sometimes, but we don't know what was actually the cause of this man to sit here. We don't know how long this will take. We don't know how long it has taken already for him to sit here. And the only thing which is left to us is to identify in a certain way the volume of time given by this particular scene. Because it lacks a complete connection to any chronology, the narrative as such is not the dominant way of perceiving this image. The dominant way of perceiving is now being caused or driven, let's say, by the acceptance and the detection of the volume of the time being produced by the, for us, unknown chronology of this narrative. And with this, I would like to conclude the discussion of the first avatar of time.